I think we're particularly drawn to characters who feel very <coughs> complex and often contradictory um, so that there's a lot to be excavated. Um, and I think when we're looking for material, we're always looking for material that will allow us to um, explode, if you like, the, the, the surface and uncover this internal experience that we've been talking about. Um, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons we've been so drawn to the novel, because I think one of the reasons that a novel can feel so rich is that we have this extraordinary privilege of feeling as though we are allowed to live inside the skin or see through the eyes of another person and, and know their deepest, most secret fears and longings. And, and I think that's one of the reasons the novel has been such rich pickings for us. Um, and with adaptation, um, you know, the, the, the challenge, I think, each time is to find the way of cracking the story open, of, of allowing, finding a device that will allow us to get at that, that internal experience. I mean, maybe there's something about the, the experience of the novelist sitting alone writing that, um, and the privacy of that, that, that is, is particularly useful to us with our, our um, fascination with subjective experience. I mean, Jane Eyre's a, a, an interesting example of somebody who, who embodies huge contradictions and, and, and really that was what was at the heart of this adaptation, the possibility that you could see Bertha the madwoman living in the attic as expressing the part of Jane that has to be denied and repressed and hidden. Because um, on the surface, Jane appears to be this very, this rather sensible, very rational, contained, controlled, um, and yet, because of this access that we have in the novel to her in, inner life, we know that um, beneath this, there's, there's another person who is, is, is full of passion and anger and, you know, has a strong sexuality, all the things that are unallowed, that are unacceptable in a Victorian woman. And um, at the heart of the adaptation was this um, idea that we could use birth, that we could use ma the mad woman to express everything that Jane herself was having to, to hide. Um, so for example, the novel begins, I mean, the very first page of the novel is about Jane sitting on a window seat in a part of the house, she's completely alone and she's between the curtain and the window on a rainy day. And we're taken immediately into her private imaginings. She's reading a book and from the book that spring up all these thoughts about foreign lands. And um, in our adaptation of Jane Eyre, her imagination, as it starts to come to life, as she starts to imagine first this arctic landscape, which feels a bit like Jane herself, very kind of rather frozen and stiff and uh, cold. And then uh, from underneath that, we, we get to another layer, if you like, of, of, of consciousness. And she starts to imagine a tropical land where there is warm rain and hurricanes and tidal waves and luscious fruit and flowers and you know this this other self if you like starts to starts to emerge which is both all the the, the, the stuff inside her that's 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 joyous and sensual and the rage and the destructive part of her that's been been hidden because to, to let it be seen is, is, is too terrifying, too dangerous. Um, and we see first of all, so the, the, the beginning of our version of Jane Eyre is, is her opening this book and we watch as this little girl in a flame dress creeps out from behind her and starts to eat tropical fruit and roll around in the warm sea and, and, and starts to dance. And we see this part of Jane, which is really her imagination, her inner life, start to start to to come alive. The vast sweep of the Arctic zone lies buried under frost and snow. These forsaken regions of dreary space are seldom seen 
by human eyes. And the light is golden day in, day out. 